welcome to the, uh, the first webinar in our new uh, best practices series. Um, you know, we're going to be talking a lot about strategy and social media on your website and introduce some tactics and best practices. Um, and uh, like I said, this isn't a product demonstration. Uh, you will get a sneak, uh, you get a peek at uh, the community marketing solution and how we're using it and how it looks in CM system. Um, and when folks want to see the follow-up and go deeper on how, how everything works, we can set that up. But this webinar is really just introduce uh, everyone to some strategies and topics and hopefully share some knowledge with you and uh, get some feedback on what you would like to see more of. So this is what uh, will be the first in a continuing series of best practices. Uh, we want you guys to succeed. We want to bring you information. Um, and so we definitely hope you'll uh, send feedback our way when we're done. Let us know what you didn't like, what you liked, and hopefully some topics that you'd be interested in hearing about uh, in the future. So uh, today uh, I'm going to be talking to you. I'm Chris Oakwitz, the marketing manager here at Percussion. I'm going to be giving a presentation on best practices um, for using uh, social media and peer endorsement on your website. You'll also hear from a peer of yours, uh, Patrick LaPena at uh, Grand Rapids Community College, and uh, Nate Barrett, uh, the director of solutions here at Percussion. Hello, all. Uh, so the agenda today, we're going to be talking about what community marketing is, uh, why it's important, um, going through some best practices for implementation, um, and for engaging users on your website. Um, we'll be hearing uh, from one of your peers, as I said, Patrick uh, from Grand Rapids Community College will be joining us to talk about what GRCC has done in social and where they're planning to go. And Nate Baird will give a short demo of the percussion solution, and uh, then we'll open it up for Q&A. So what is community marketing? Um, basically, it's enabling your users, uh, whether your customers, prospects, or partners, to behave on your site the way people were hardwired to um, socially. Uh, it's enabling your users to talk about your brand and your products and services and share their insights with you and your other customers, uh, leveraging peer endorsement, uh, mostly by way of user-generated content. Um, if it's anything, it's enabling your own customers to do some of the marketing heavy lifting for you. Uh, and when we talk about user-generated content, I'm referring to the various types of content that are created by end users. Uh, ratings, reviews, comments, polls, rich media, even uh, third-party content that you can pull into your own web presence. Uh, so let's dispel some myths really quick. Uh, first of all, social media is new. Uh, community aspects and social features have been around since the advent of the own internet, uh, the original internet. Uh, it also isn't going anywhere. Um, most people have access, uh, more people have access than ever before, um, and social is so woven into the fabric of the Internet that we're simply seeing more and more people participate. Uh, this eMarketer chart shows how quickly the number of content contributors online is growing and how it's expected to continue to grow. Um, so allowing your, your uh, users to participate and, in effect, giving your audience access to uh, their peers' opinions and testimonials and ideas can drive a lot of results. So, We'll see it can lift conversions, leads, and sales. It can also generate engagement and trust through credibility. It can create awareness. It can allow your customers to self-support each other. And it can be a great idea generator for new products and services and improvements. Uh, it's also critical. Uh, why? Well, the Internet is everywhere. It's not just in the home, in the office, in a hotel room anymore, but everywhere. Uh, we're all aware of it, but it's important to point out uh, for a few reasons. If a customer in a store wants to look up consumer reviews of your product, they can do it right in the aisle. Uh, if they're in a cab on a trip and need a service, they can find information before they even step out onto the street. And uh, as I discovered a few weeks ago on an AirTran flight, if I want to leave a comment on a service at 33,000 feet, I can do it. Um, also, traditional marketing is uh, less effective than ever. Uh, consumers don't trust corporate marketing or advertising. Um, but that's not necessarily a terrible thing. They do trust each other. 78% uh, of users say consumer recommendations are credible. 84% trust reviews more than expert reviews. And uh, from some of your own peers, uh, site owners say that user-generated content lifts conversion levels, increases traffic, and boosts average spend. But it's uh, also not only about business to, commerce, uh, to uh, consumer. 93% um, of business users consider ratings and reviews very valuable to decision making. And others have removed suppliers uh, to the negative reviews. It's important for PFP as well. Uh, third reason, Internet users are empowered. They have Google. If I need to find information about uh, what new energy-saving windows I should install in my apartment, I'm not likely to call Home Depot and ask them for advice. I'm going to search online. And uh, your company probably better be found when I do. Um, and I'd like to show you a little use case that happened to me a couple days ago. I'm a photographer my part-time. 
And the other day I figured, okay, I've saved up a bit. I'm going to buy myself a nice 50 millimeter prime lens. So I looked on Google. And three of the top five results were the pages with user generated content uh, UGC Drive SEO. And one of the other two remaining results actually was to an independent photographer blogging about lenses. Uh, only one result, sad number five over at the bottom, was to the actual Canon site. And note I didn't search for a Canon 50 millimeter reviews or which Canon lens should I buy. I searched uh, 50 millimeter lens Canon. So this is, uh, this is Nate speaking. And uh, just I think this is a very critical point, you know, because folks are, are constantly looking for something to keep content fresh. Folks are looking for, you know, the, the quote, secret sauce that is SEO and the algorithms that are, you know, constantly shifting. And if you can engage, you know, uh, your users, engage anyone. To contribute content to your site, it's, get, it's fresh. It will get re-indexed. You know, one of the best ways of improving SEO is having uh, fresh, relevant content. So when content gets updated, that becomes fresh. You have new uh, user-generated articles, user-generated reviews, um, and you're seeing more and more uh, search engines actually, you know, aiming to to use the human mind. You know, with Bing and other things like that, folks are trying to um, actually get the recommendations, get the reviews uh, directly into that result, you know, to help folks make better decisions. So, again, with SEO, enabling comments, enabling ratings, um, then, you know, you're going to get boosted up. Which way? Okay. Um, yeah, thanks, Nate. Also, uh, community drive results. Uh, Deloitte found that um, can actually increase revenue per customer pretty dramatically. Uh, we've got communities like My Starbucks Idea or uh, Dell Idea Storm, um, but you don't need to be Dell or Starbucks to engage your users. Actually, because you're not Dell or Starbucks, you need to engage your users, and there's a lot of opportunity to do so. Um, so we're going to talk about a few simple ways to do that: um, ratings and reviews, polls, comments, rich media, third-party community content. Uh, we're going to go through each of these and look at some of the best practices for putting them to work for you. So ratings and reviews. Here's a screenshot from wine.com showing some reviews on a nice Merlot. Um, should be pretty familiar to everyone. Uh, so how should ratings and reviews look on your site? Well, they should pretty much look familiar. As long as they're familiar, they're usable. Uh, Amazon pretty much invented this and uh, just fix the formula that people trust. Um, So, yeah, sorry about that. Why use ratings and reviews? Uh, well, they can lift conversion pretty significantly. Um, they can also drive traffic through search, uh, as Nate just mentioned. And uh, this is actually pretty interesting. They can align your users' needs with their actions and set expectations. Uh, I was reading on an internet retailer and um, some items on Petco.com with consumer reviews actually have a 20% lower return rate on average than items without it. Uh, I come from the e-commerce world before I came to profession, and uh, you know, return, returns were definitely a, a big cost on a business. And so that's a, a, that was interesting for me to see. Yeah, I think this is a really interesting, you know, the statistic is interesting, but I think that the message uh, is also interesting that um, people can find the right product better, in it, and I think that's, you know, a two-way street. Right? Clearly, the, the, the vendor of the good, of the wear, of the fair, is much happier that they're not getting returns, but at the same time, the buyer is finding the right product that the buyer was looking for. So, you know, any type of um, you know, buyer satisfaction, any time that you can, it's funny because you sort of think of a top line approach, you know, a review, someone's going to read a peer review, they're going to be much more compelled, you know, the, of the conversion rate up top, but then that sort of downstream, a customer satisfaction is going to be happier. They found the right product they wanted. They're more likely to come back uh, and create another review. It kind of creates this cyclical approach where, you know, folks have a good experience on the website as well as a good experience with the service, with the product, with the content um, that they're acting on. So, cool. 